Good morning and good afternoon to everybody. Thanks for joining us uh, today and uh, for another set of Live webinar. We're excited to have you here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about hydrant maintenance and, uh, and fire flows and really digging into the, the set of tools and seeing how you can accomplish those things from both a field perspective and, um, and from the office side of things. There's a lot of different ways to kind of to kind of tackle to tackle hydrant maintenance and and to use Cetaru to do that. You know, hydrants always represent an interesting asset uh, for water utilities, typically because, to put it simply, you have a lot of them, right? And they um, so being able to kind of quickly understand the scope of the condition that they're in. Uh, and to be able to respond and do maintenance efficiently, you know, makes a really big difference. And, and small amounts of time savings and efficiencies get translated over lots and lots of assets. So I'm excited to, to share some of this information with you today. Um, if this is your first time on a Zoom webinar, uh, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Uh, the, you'll notice um, you've probably been on a Zoom meeting now in the last few, five, six weeks here. Uh, the big difference between the webinar versus using uh, just kind of a regular Zoom meeting is you'll notice there's a Q&A button. Uh, and that Q&A button, when you type a question in there, um, it's gonna come right to me and, uh, and I'll see the question and, um, and I'll go ahead and talk about it and give the, and, and give the answer um, as we're going through the presentation here. Um, I like lots of questions, so feel free to, to pass out as many questions as you want. You're gonna get more out of the, the webinar. We want you to get as much information as possible out of it. And so uh, fire away with the questions. Uh, the more interactive, the better. Uh, so let's um, jump into things here a little bit. Um, if you haven't already, are following us on your uh, favorite social media, let's go ahead and do it. Pull out your phone while you're watching the webinar here um, and look for us on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter. Uh, that's where you're going to see the most content from us on here. So uh, lots of ways to, to stay in touch with us. We'll, we put a lot of good content and announcements out on there. Um, and sometimes it's quite a bit easier than email to, to see some of those things. So let's um, make sure you go ahead and do that. We're going to talk today mostly around how do you digitally manage all the information around your hydrants, right? And really getting a away from a lot of paper workflows on things. Uh, certainly we're going to get into talking about things from a real time side of things and how does this data move in a real time way. And then I'm going to show you some ways that you can also use hydrant information to hopefully start moving kind of on the, the right hand side of the spectrum where we're thinking about predictive um, kind of preemptive um, operations. Um, and for those of you that aren't familiar with this, what we call drops is really the Cetaru stepwise approach for being able to implement technology at your system, so at your utility. Every utility really is looking for better ways to move towards a, a smart network, a smart utility that's a self-driving automated place, and those kind of changes are, uh, are pretty big. And so what Cetera is designed to do is to get you there one step at a time. Um, and I'll reference this as we go through and are discussing some of the, um, some of the pieces here. So with that being said, I'm going to hop right into some things here. Let me, I'm going to start this demo actually from my phone. So let me, uh, let me go in and share some, share some content there. That's going to just take me, take me one second to get that fired up on the phone here. Um, if you have any initial questions, go ahead and, and fire those in, um, but you should see my phone pop it up on the screen here any second. All right, looks like that's where it is. Um, so let's go into the FieldForce application. All right, so what you're looking at here on FieldForce is um, you're looking at my phone, um, and here I can, I'll show you. So, you know, you're looking at the same screen here um, that you're seeing, but just projected on the screen is my uh, is my phone. And so the, the phone interface is designed uh, primarily as a field application today, and it allows you to very quickly see all the assets, all the information um, that you that you really that you need to complete your field activities. The numbers across the top are corresponding to work orders that have been assigned to me, um, and they're tied specifically to asset types that are in here. So Let's see, if I go in, and we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about hydrants today, but I'll just hit on a couple, 
you know, just to kind of show you how this interface works. If I touch on valve, it shows me a list of valves um, that have tasks assigned to me. And then I come over and I hit the little map icon and now it's gonna show me on the map where those are, right? And I can use my fingers and zoom right in. But if we wanna go in and look at the hydrant tasks, I'm gonna come back here um, and I'm gonna to touch on back to the grid view there. And I see I've got 11 hydrant tasks assigned to me. So I touch on hydrants and now it gives me a listing of those, right? And again, I can come here to my map view and the map view is gonna show me the location of all those hydrant tasks, right? So I can see those, see exactly where those are located on the map. Um, and I can drill right into any individual one. I'm just using my fingers, you know, sort of pinching and zooming the map um, to drill right into a specific location. And I can touch on that and see exactly uh, what's been, uh, what's expected of, or what task is expected there. Um, so in this case here, I've got a hydrant flush. Uh, but let's go back to that list view, um, and I want to look at um, I want to look at this fire flow test. So really, so as you see these different types, and we'll hit on a couple of these through the presentation. But the idea here is is that you can set up and configure really just about kind of any maintenance activity or type that you want, and be able to be able to simply and easily do it. So I'm going to come in here on the fire flow test, and if it's going to give me any some initial information about my hydrant, you can control what information you're going to see there. Uh, and then from there, it's going to bring me right into the form where I can go ahead and complete my, uh, complete my fire flow test. Uh, and I'll show you in a, in a little bit here, too, how you would assign this to somebody, but this has already been, been pre-assigned to me here, right? So, um, so here's the fire flow test. Um, if I hit the little map icon up there in the top, it brings me to that location so I can always see where I am. Um, but I'll hit the little, the little form field and that's gonna bring me back to my form. Um, and we can go ahead and fill out this information on our fire flow test. Uh, so let's go ahead and, <coughs> excuse me, we'll go ahead and do that. So we'll put in the residual static pressure for this. We'll put in a pedo reading. Um, we'll see how long we, ran our hydrant for? Did we use a diffuser? Now, all of the fields that you see on here are all able to be customized, okay? You can, you can customize all the fields um, and be able to modify them however you need to. Um, the, let's, if we come in here and I'll just fill out the date as well in here also. Um, and then um, I could go ahead and add a photo in here as well too. So I can grab something that's on the uh, camera itself, or I can do something that is um, um, already on the phone, or I can do something that's in the, on the, uh, use the camera. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, maybe we'll put a picture of me in here. Let's throw that on there. So, oh, hang on one second, everybody. Okay. All right. Um, so we add the picture that's in there. And um, and then I can go in. Oh, let me go back a second because I wanted to show you here um, on our test. Uh, whoops. So one of the things I didn't mention in here is you notice the calculation is in here. So when you go ahead and you fill out these, um, the values that are in here, um, you're going to automatically have calculations done for you. Um, so in this case, you see here, it's looking at the static pressure, it's looking at the residual pressure, the pedo reading, and that flow time. And it's gonna go ahead and, and at the bottom of that screen, it's calculating for me that we're gonna use, um, you know, we're getting a flow rate of about eight, 840 GPM, and we're gonna use about 16, 17,000 gallons when we do this flow test. So that kind of, those kind of calculations can be figured out, um, can be figured out pretty easily. Um, one of the questions here, oh, is what is a pedo reading? So pedo, re a pedo reading is really just a it's, a, it's a small tool that gives you basically what the velocity looks like. Um, and it allows you to then do calculations uh, in terms of what your flow rates might look like coming out of there. Um, the, um, so, and again, I can, if I hit next here and you see the work order details are figured out, I can then look at things like time, material, equipment, et cetera. I can add all that information right in here. Now, 
one of the things I love, about, again, about the interface is, is that this is all designed to be as simple as possible for your field staff. Because if you make the, if you make the information simple, um, chances are you'll get people to use it, right? And if you can get your field staff to be able to, to adopt and to use these tools, it really is going to help uh, your organization and really going to really going to see um, a lot of benefits. So we'll go ahead and save that. Uh, and we could fill out the other information in there um, as well if we wanted to. Uh, when we go back to our, um, we can go back to, let's go back to our test information here. Um, and let's say that now we've done our fire flow test, right? But um, we're going to say we want to end up putting another hydrant close to here. So we go to the end of this cul-de-sac where it doesn't look like there's a, there's a hydrant and you end up wanting to install one. So one of the things that I can do right from here is add new, add new assets as well. So if I hit the plus sign, um, it's going to let me go right on the map here and add that asset. Okay. And so you'll see it added that asset right on the map. And this is really nice because let's say, depending on your field, or your, the, the level of your GIS, and depending on what your workflows look like, there's gonna be times where you might send your staff in the field out to the, um, send them out to the, in the field, and you might not necessarily have work orders pre-assigned to them. You might say, hey, I want you to go out in this neighborhood, and I want you to flow every hydrant that's in this neighborhood, right, to flush something. Um, or, um, you know, similar kind of workflows. Well, what happens if, if something's not in the GIS and it just doesn't exist? Do they just not do it? Do they do it and not record it, et cetera? So this lets you be able to record those and to do data collection on new assets right there um, all the time. And so now that that asset's in there, I can come in and I could come in and say, hey, I'm going to do a hydrant inspection, right? Um, and this might have a whole pile of information for things I'm going to do about the hydrant inspection, right? So we'll fill out some of these things. Um, the, now, what's interesting is, is you notice as I'm filling this out that we're using a lot of pick lists in here. Okay. Um, and the idea here is, is that you're hopefully minimizing the amount of typing that you're doing. For folks, right? Especially if they're typing on the phone, but just in general, if you're looking at at being able to um, to speed up your field crews for them to be able to do these things um, quickly, then you're going to want to uh, make it so that they're not typing a lot. Um, and this form here, this is a pretty. Let's say this has some leakage in it. There's a lot of information to calculate in this form, right? Um, and that is. Um, and that's intentional in this particular form. The, um, so the same thing, we're finished filling this one out. You know, was it operable? Yep. And operational status, uh, we'll just say it's operable. Um, I could fill a photo in here if I want. So now I've basically essentially created an asset, okay? Created it from scratch in the field, done that hydrant inspection, and all that information around that is getting written right to the GIS form, okay? Um, and one of the things that comes up is where is this information in Cedarus stored, right? And, and Cedarus is using the GIS as its background um, storage information, okay? And so it has the ability to, um, you're using the geodatabase, and so all this data is getting stored right there with all the other GIS information that you have. Um, so it becomes really easy to help reduce data silos within the organization um, as a result. Um, so now I've got I've completed both of those activities there um, on my on my on my phone. The other thing that's worth noting is um, you see where it, it is created an asset history as well too. So now from a field perspective, anytime something's been completed in the field, they can really easily see that information right up there. Um, all right. I'm going to hop over into the office software for a second, but if you've got questions about the field software, go ahead and, and get those posted into the, the webinar software. We're going to hop back in there um, a little bit towards the end, but I want to go in the office side of things and show you a little bit some of the tools related around, uh, around hydrant maintenance and some of those pieces in there. All right. So let's, let me hop in here. Uh, 
So what you're looking at here, this is what we call Ceteru Omni, okay? And Ceteru Omni um, is the field application, and this is where you're going to see, um, this is where you're going to see really a place where all your data comes together. Uh, a lot of it is driven around the idea of these performance tiles that you see here, okay? And performance tiles are what drive a lot of your key performance indicators. And you see as I kind of scroll to the right here, I've got performance tiles that hit all kinds of different, different pieces in my system in here. Uh, and then what's neat about the performance tiles is they work interactive with the map that's in here. And then I can also look at things sort of historically or over time as well too. Uh, so for example here, I want to look at you know hydrant work that's been completed this year. And I can come out and I click on that tile. And that's what all these big hydrant icons are saying. So basically, in the past year, in the past 365 days, we've touched 1,300 some hydrants. <coughs> and I can immediately uh, immediately see on the map you know, where those are. Uh, if I want to just look and say, hey, what, what's been done in the past month? Um, you know, and we've been inside a lot more in the past month, right? Not doing as much field work, trying to do some of that. So hey, in the past month, there's only been seven, you know, pieces of hydro work or activity that's been done, right? And so I can see, you know, and again, I can kind of see on the map exactly the location of those and see exactly, um, exactly where those pieces are. Um, and then I can come in here, let's scroll through a couple more. So here I see I've got four hydrants that need paint in my system. Um, and now I've got five hydrants that have moderate leakage in my system. Uh, and so I've got those five hydrants and I can, they're right here. Um, I can see them listed right here on the map. Uh, and one of those is the one that we just, uh, we just did in here, um, whoops, which we just set up in there. Uh, let me go back in here. So we can go in, we can see the location of those individual hydrants right from here. So here's one of those leaking hydrants right on here. Um, and I can, I'm able to work with those right, right from here. And so now if I come to one of those individual hydrants that I have, um, that I have selected in here, I've got this one and, um, I can, um, we'll go into it. And then I'm, what I'm going to do here is because I've got this leaking hydrant, I want to go ahead and create a work order to go ahead and do some maintenance on this hydrant, right? So as I create that work order, I can go in here to this work order type and I can select maintenance. Then I can choose who I'm assigning it to. I'm gonna assign it to myself. If I was doing something that was in response to a customer issue or a customer problem, I can do that right from in here and pull that information in. But I'm gonna go in here and just say, I'm gonna go ahead and create that, um, create that work order um, right from this particular uh, right from that spot. And this is kind of how you can sort of set up those workflows that you're going to think about where you would have uh, maintenance activities, inspection activities that are going to, going to drive other repair activities and be able to work and complete those, um, complete those pieces right from there. So pretty, uh, it's a pretty straightforward way to kind of tackle, um, tackle some of those pieces in here. Uh, and the same idea, one of the other things I can do here, I've got like, you know, these painting ones, one of the things I could do, I can come in and you see I've, I've hit the little filter button and it's cleaned up my map for me. And so I can come in here and just manually, I'm holding down the control key and I can select a group of ones or I could be drawing a box around them. And I can come in here and same thing, I wanna do maintenance activities for here. Um, and I can have that set up. And then how do you define those workflows is again, sort of all up to you. I've got some folks that have, you know, kind of like you said, these generic hydrant maintenance workflows. And I've got others that might have very specific, like here's a hydrant painting workflow. I can set up kind of multi-step things. It's really, it's really up to you how you want to define those workflows, but our implementation folks um, can help you kind of define some best practices uh, on some of those pieces as well too. So that's how I can kind of assign those those work and, and tasks to people, especially based off of um, current conditions uh, in there. Let's see. 
All right, let's just check in for questions. So we've got about 10 minutes of time left in here. I've got a few, few other things to show you, uh, but certainly I'm ready to, ready to hear your questions, ready to hear uh, your thoughts or other, other kind of specific pieces. A uh, couple other things in here. So if I go to my trend view, um, you'll notice, you know, so the map goes away and now I can start looking at things, I can start looking at trends over time, okay? Uh, and so here we can kind of see, hey, this is over the past year, what our hydrant maintenance work has looked like. So we've got some surges in a few spots, you know, for the last few months, been trucking along at a handful each day. If I wanted to zoom in um, to a specific area, I could do that and I can see here, okay, last June we did 25 on this day and 29 on this day. Um, it's gonna give me some summary statistics up here as well too, so that I know so we're trending up like over 100% this year from where we were the previous year in, in terms of hydrant maintenance and how that's being done. Um, and so it becomes a really kind of easy way to see exactly how you're trending and how some of those things work. The, um, what's interesting is, is that, you know, this is not designed to be the be all end all of reporting here. It's designed to be the tool that everybody at the utility can use, right? So that your, your supervisors, your, your, your folks that might not necessarily be the most savvy uh, GIS people or, or report building type people can really quickly get at some of this information, track it, see it, see how things are, are trending um, and be able to work with it from there. So, um, and that's really, that's really the goal of this, this interface here. In addition to kind of looking at, uh, um, in addition to looking at just the, uh, sort of what work that's been completed kind of information as well, too. You know, I can do trending on things like this water loss from leaks, or if I had a metric set up in here for, you know, show me all the water loss just from um, hydrant flow, fire flow tests and some of those things, I can have all that stuff and I can view some of that information um, in the trend view. Um, and it kind of looks like, you know, what I'll do, let me show you here the SCADA tag. So this is a SCADA tag I'm going to just drag in here. Uh, and so this is showing me what's the average system pressure at this pressure sensor. Uh, and I can see what that looks like for the past day or see what that looks like for the past week in here um, and see how that's trending. And so I can do the same thing with any of these kind of calculated values or any, any kind of real-time data piece. And so, again, as you're getting into wanting to be a little more precise with how you do some of that hydrant piece, some of that can be uh, really beneficial, really valuable for you. Now, one other neat thing around hydrants that I'll show you in here, if I swipe to the left on here, it's going to bring up for me um, the set of room modeling interface. Okay. And so the set of room modeling interface is actually running your hydraulic model. Um, so you don't have to have a hydraulic model by any means. Um, many, many of our folks don't, don't have a hydraulic model. But if you do, and you want to do things like I can come in and I can compare um, and look at uh, my GIS in right in conjunction with my hydraulic model as well too, right? So I can come in here and I can go into a specific area um, in my system here. I'm going to zoom in here and it brings me right into this specific area and I can come in and I can look at one of those spots. Um, let me just look at the model here. Uh, and I want to... Um, there we go. I want to uh, just clean up the map here a little bit. So I, then I could choose a specific spot on the map that I want to. Uh, and from there, could go ahead and run a quick fire flow analysis, right? So I'll come here to simulate. I've chosen this spot on this pipe right here. I want to think about, can I get 1,000 GPM out of this location um, and run that? And now, if I've done a fire flow test, let's say, from field force, and that's shown up here, I then have the ability that I can essentially move back and forth between the model and set a root on me, and I can compare the results uh, from those two things and know, okay, does this make sense, right? My hydraulic model is telling me I should be seeing, um, in this case, you know, it's telling me now I should be seeing, you know, upwards of, the, I should be able to get, you know, 6,000 GPM out of this um, location at 20 PSI. Um, and so um, when we, you know, look at it at a, uh, at a higher, um, at a higher pressure, uh, we still see, you know, significant flow coming out of there. So the, um, 
And when I come back to the map view, it's going to actually give me full hydraulic model results, and I can see those right from there. Um, and then the same idea when I swipe back in here to uh, the model, it's going to bring me right back, or when I swipe back here into Omni, it's going to bring me right back zoomed in right to that location. So you've got this ability to to look at your hydrants and how they're how they're behaving from a whole bunch of uh, whole bunch of different angles. All right, let's um, um, let me hit a couple questions here, and then I'm going to show you show you one more uh, piece here on the on the field force side. Um, so let's see. One of the questions: work that is trending, comparing, you know, does it include scheduled PMs? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, the and it, the answer is it could, I guess, right? So those all of the performance files that you see and some of these things, they're all um, they're all essentially queries that are hitting the back end database and presenting that information back. So so you can essentially have them set up pulling whatever information you like for the most part. Um, you can also all of your work tasks and activities, and I didn't I didn't show this, but um, like if I let's go and click on one of these hydrants real quick. If I click on one of these hydrants um, in here, um, and it's gonna I'm gonna come in here. I want to schedule a create a work order here on this hydrant. One of the things I have at the bottom is I can set up recurrence intervals for everything there. So if I wanted to come in here and say, hey, I want this to be done, you know, yearly or every two years or whatever, I can set up all those recurrence intervals. So um, let's see, can you do side-by-side -side trends, like work from 2019 next to work from 2020? So you can, in some respects, you can, I can do some things combined together. Um, I can, um, from a trend perspective here, um, like if I come in here, let's do this. We'll look at, um, you know, hydrant work done this year, and I can compare that to, um, I don't know if I've got a, oh yeah, look, I've got a valve work completed this year. So I've got hydrant work and valve work, and it's going to pull that in here, and we'll see how those two, those two things kind of compare. Right, so the the valve work shows up here in gray, you know. So on January thirty first, I did fifteen valves and I did two hydrants, uh, and so the you can essentially, depending on what you have tiles configured for, you can drag multiple tiles in and see those uh, see those come together. Uh, it's also worth noting that there's a significant upgrade to the Setter Omni application that's going to be coming out. Um, in the next few months, we're going to have some initial beta folks of it, but, you know, wider releases um, over the summer that are going to add tremendous amount of flexibility to some of the graphing and some of that work um, that you have in there. Um, let's see. And then another question, will hydrant testing give you color coding for painting of hydrants and marking? Oh, you, you know, and so, yeah, that's actually a cool, that's a cool question. And I, I'm guessing if I understand what that means, right? So. So what we're really talking about here is you go out and do a hydrant test um, high, and you get a certain result for that and you have within your jurisdiction a, a, uh, a way that you paint hydrants based on available fire flow, right? Uh, so one of the things that you can do within the field force application is you can set up conditional logic um, within there. And let me, let me hop back into the field force application here. Uh, and I'll, uh, I can kind of show you, show you an example of that. Let me, I just got to stop. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and we'll start sharing uh, back on my phone. All right. So when I go into any, um, let's go, we'll just go, um, you know, hydro replacement here. So when I go into any one of these particular um, fields in here, one of the things I can do is I can have conditional logic set up within, uh, within my forms. Um, so I can basically have it do things where it says, okay, if it does this, you know, then do this, right? Uh, um, actually, I'll show you what's a cool, cool kind of example of that is, um, let me go on to here. It's going to go back to my map and let's actually look at a um, let me look at a valve so if we touch on a valve 
and um, I'm going to just do a valve exercise. I think I've got it. Yeah. So in this valve exercise, one of the things that we that we can do is it's a six inch valve turns to close. Um, let's say I put 20 in there and you notice that there's no comments. Um, if I put, um, let's say I was only able to get 12 turns on this valve. It tells me right there and then in the comments that there's a conflict with the size of that valve and the number of turns to close, right? So it's got this logic behind there that's looking at one piece of information and looking at another piece of information and then providing the user with some feedback. So similarly, that could be done for like hydro painting, right? So if everything that you know is above a certain rating is blue, I can put that in there. If it's within a certain another rating, I do this, at another rating, I do this, that kind of thing. So um, so that is um, is definitely all really doable. So, um, so one thing I just wanted to show you real quick um, back here in the field application. So you notice when we left the field application before we had 15 or so hydrants. Now I've got 15 ones assigned to me. I've got these new ones, these new hydrant maintenance tasks that just got assigned to me um, around doing the um, doing painting and some of that stuff, right? So work order numbers, those comments that I put in there around all needing painting, et cetera. And this goes back to that idea I was talking about in terms of how do we handle some of these things from a real time perspective. Um, and um, and really try to improve your workflows by doing that. Well, good. I think um, we'd like to keep the content here and keep these to about 30 minutes, kind of get you in and out quickly, um, share a bunch of information with you. So we, we are bumping up against that time. If you have any last minute questions, go ahead and fire them away um, in that Q&A panel. Um, we, um, everybody that attended today, you'll get a follow-up email. We'll have a link to the recording um, of the webinar. Um, we also eventually get those up on the on our website as well too, so that you can uh, you can kind of go there and see an archive um, of these. And we're happy to we're happy to have a more detailed um, conversation with your organization as well too. And um, we're happy to you know to talk in more depth about what you're looking to try to do as well. So uh, lots of ways to kind of keep the conversation going here, and we're happy to happy to do that with you. All right, well, I don't see any other questions for the moment, so thanks, everybody. Um, we look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. Um, and like I said, if you have any, any other questions or, or need additional information from us, just let us know. Take care, everybody. Thank you.